117. Brand new locomotives. They were ordered straight off the drawing board, with no prototype built before the full order was placed. British Railways announced them as the new standard Type 1 design. The new standard would replace everything that came before. Four years later, rows of them were stored as unserviceable in Scottish sidings at Ardrossan and Miller Hill. By 1967, long lines of Class 17 locomotives could be found in storage. Some were withdrawn before they ever received tops renumbering. By the end of 1971, every Class 17 had been withdrawn from service, and most were scrapped in the years that followed. One survived, because Hemolite, a cement company, bought D8568 for industrial work in 1972. This is the Class 17 Clayton. British Railways built an entire fleet, announced it as the new standard, and then quietly pretended the whole thing never happened. The whole thing started with a visibility problem. The existing Type 1 diesels, the Class 20 locomotives built by English Electric, had their cab at one end. They worked fine going forward, but when running nose first in the other direction, crews could barely see what was coming at them. British Rail Management wanted something better. A center cab design, with low bonnets on either side, would give the driver clear sight lines in both directions of travel. Clayton Equipment Company pitched exactly that. A cab in the middle, glass all around, what crews would later call the greenhouse, low engine covers so you could actually see the track ahead. On paper, it looked like everything British Rail wanted from their next generation Type 1. There was one engineering compromise, though. To keep those bonnets low enough for proper visibility, they could not fit a single large engine underneath them. Clayton's solution was two smaller horizontal engines, one on each side of the cab. Paxman 6 ZHXL units were originally intended for use in diesel rail cars, but were adapted here for mainline service. Each produced 450 horsepower, 900 horsepower combined. That was enough for light freight and trip working across the Scottish region. British Rail liked what they saw. They ordered all 117 before a single one turned a wheel in revenue service. The railway press announced these would be the new standard Type 1 replacing the Class 20s that had been doing the job reliably for years. The Paxman engines had been tested once in a rail application before this. Two went into an experimental diesel multiple unit in 1956, and they ran about 18 months without major issues. Those test engines were naturally aspirated, producing 300 horsepower each. The Clayton versions were turbocharged, running at higher pressures and temperatures than anything previously tested in service. Paxman knew there might be problems coming. The engine frames were cast in aluminium, and Paxman had already seen cracking issues with aluminium castings on other engine types they produced. According to Paxman engineer John Cove, quoted in company history material, the company suggested to British Rail that they supply the engines with cast iron crank cases from the start. More weight, but considerably more reliable under sustained operational load. British Rail refused. They wanted the engines exactly as tested. Aluminium crank cases, just like the ones that had worked fine in that 18 month trial with the experimental unit. Cove's account of what happened next is worth hearing directly. Quote, we were so keen to get the order that we failed to stand up for what we believed was necessary and so supplied them in aluminium. But before long, these engines in service had run longer hours than the test engines and troubles began to become apparent." End quote. The aluminium crankcases started cracking under the stress of daily revenue service. Paxman ended up changing the crankcases to iron across the fleet at their own considerable expense. The problems did not stop there. Camshaft failures. Cylinder head problems. 
turbocharger issues across the fleet. Availability was reported around 60% even after modifications. That meant a large part of the fleet was routinely unavailable. Even after the crankcase rebuilds, availability only climbed to around 60%. For comparison, the Class 20s they were meant to replace were widely regarded as far more reliable in everyday service. Some accounts from people around the class noted something else during this period. The rear engine failed more frequently than the front one. Reports and photographs suggested the rear engine was producing more black smoke than the front, leading to claims that airflow through the bodywork was starving it of air. The power controller in the cab had a guard fitted to prevent drivers from using the last notch. One driver later recalled that full power was discouraged because it was considered risky for regular operation. One witness at Bathgate described watching Clayton's on freight workings, only a few years old, with exhaust smoke obliterating the entire area around them. Worse than any steam locomotive they had supposedly replaced. And that visibility problem the whole design was meant to solve. The long bonnets extending from the center cab meant crews could not see the area immediately in front of the locomotive. Reports suggest it did not deliver the visibility improvement British Rail wanted. They tested two Claytons, working in multiple, on the Consett iron ore trains in 1963. Heavy work, exactly what a Type 1 should handle. Published service histories record that D8501 and D8536 proved underpowered and were moved to lighter duties. Locomotives built to be the standard could not actually do standard work. D8611 entered service December 1964. Withdrawn October 1968. 46 months. Under four years from factory floor to scrapyard. D8537 went first. July 1968. 61 months working life. Part of that time it was stored in sidings, waiting for repairs that kept not coming. By 1967, long lines of Claytons were already being stored out of use, and withdrawals began the following year. British Rail ordered 100 new Class 20 locomotives as replacements. The Class 20 design was ordered to replace the Class 17 fleet. Withdrawals came fast after that. By December 1971, every Clayton was gone from service. None remained in service long enough to receive tops renumbering. 116 went to scrappers across the country. D8568 survived only because Hemelite, a cement company near Hemel Hempstead, bought it for industrial shunting in 1972. It later became notable as the first privately owned ex-mainline diesel said to have broken British Rail's no private diesels ban. The preserved locomotive wears British Rail blue livery now. In British Rail service, it spent its working life in green because the class was gone before blue became standard. In 2006, Helgen released a double O gauge model of the class 17. It suffered manufacturing problems and proved unreliable in operation. Model railway publications recorded that Helgen offered replacement chassis. Even the miniature could not escape the reputation. If your children watch Thomas the Tank Engine, you might know Derek, a green diesel with overheating problems who keeps breaking down. Thomas fandom documentation describes Derek as being based on the Class 17, the writers gave him the same reliability issues. A children's program used this locomotive because breaking down was its defining characteristic. 117 built, 116 scrapped, one survivor. No units remained in service long enough to receive tops numbers. British Rail ordered Class 20 locomotives as replacements. British Railways announced the Clayton as the future. Within a decade, they erased it from the network and ordered the old design back into production. The records survive. The testimony survives. There is little official acknowledgement of how unsuccessful the class was. The class 17 disappeared and British Rail moved on as if it never happened.